In lateral decubitus, the right tailbone was put on an arm support. Starting at an anterior compartment, the proximal anteromedial portal was initially made for a viewing portal, then anterolateral portal was created for working portal. Anterior plica was resected, and in case of concomitant presence of lateral epicondylitis, extensor carpi radialis brevis was debrided. Proceeding to posterior compartment for debridement of posterior lateral plica, a posterior lateral portal was created for initial viewing portal. Next, an accessory posterior lateral portal was created for working portal, which was 2 to 3 cm proximal to the posterior lateral portal. The insertion is lateral to the triceps muscle, then the soft tissue was cleared for extending working space. The instruments of the two portals were swapped. These two portals can be interchangeably used for working and viewing. Working space was proceeded to the olecranon fossa area and then lateral gutter. Working in the lateral gutter, there is a potential jamming of the arthroscopic camera tip and operating instrument because both are in the same direction of the lateral side of elbow. This can be solved by arranging the arthroscopic camera tip proximally and the operating instrument distally. The tip of the operating instrument will stay in front of the camera tip. Next, viewing portal is changed to posterior lateral portal. A direct lateral portal was created for working portal. At this setting, plica can be easily resected at the area of posterior radial capitula joint. Working is easier with elbow extended. After finishing the debridement procedure, the postural lateral rotatory instability of elbow was checked. Viewing from posterior lateral portal, a probe coming from direct lateral portal was used to measure the ulnohumeral gap during forced full supination of forearm and full extension of elbow. A widening gap of more than 2 mm indicates a percent of posterior lateral rotatory instability. After the surgery, arm sling was not used. Immediate postoperative active range of motion was encouraged. After the pain subsides, the patient was allowed to perform normal daily life activities.